This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, let's look at some more cinematography from some movies with the behind the scenes footage and try and break down how they shot it. So this first one is from a movie called Hidden Figures, shot by Mandy Walker. They shot this on a 35 millimeter anamorphic with Panavision T and E series lenses, which is basically the pinnacle of what a camera can be. If there's someone here watching this video that's shot on 35 millimeter anamorphic with Panavision T or E, something similar lenses, let me know in the comments. Make yourself be heard because you have made it. So this scene is this woman walks into this courtroom. We dolly along. She pauses here. There's a conversation. Then she walks up to old mate here, has a chat. So there's a few things that we could take away from this behind the scenes footage. Uh, firstly, this guy here has definitely had enough. He is on hour number 16 in the day and can't take it. So from this behind the scenes footage, we've got this camera back here that is shooting this shot of her. And we can see this, this you know, big wall of light on the camera right hand side. Then we've also got a little bit of black on the other side for some contrast. And this might seem like a big overwhelming setup that you could never achieve, but it's pretty classic, just beautiful lighting. And it's exactly the same as what you would get if you filmed a person in the middle of the frame, put a softbox on one side and put some black on the other side to add some contrast. It's just scaled right up, much bigger. And the light needs to be that big because she's walking from the back of the room all the way up to the front of this desk with this guy and you want to keep that light split down the middle of her face to keep that shape there. So this black material here would be to block the fixture that's behind it because that would be spilling out and hitting the actor in the face. Then we've also got this uh, black floppy and this net here and that would be for this shot here because this woman typing is really close to that light so it would be really bright on her so they need to bring the level down with that net and then that floppy would probably be from stopping you know more just more light hitting her face from that huge frame because it would just wrap around too much and it would just be a huge amount where she's sitting then we've got these other ones above which are probably to stop the light spilling into the ceiling and then coming back down and losing the contrast that they've created at the end we have what looks like a bit of ultra bounce maybe and that's sort of wrapping the light around her face when she's in that position at the end which is the majority of the scene talking to the guy so for this dolly track shot of her walking in i assume the dolly would have been placed here and then we've got these four by frames and you can see the light is shaped a bit nicely on her face on this shot as opposed to the wide shot you can see the difference They might have used those smaller frames, brought those up closer to her to shape the light on her face a little bit more. Then I assume they've probably also got a soft controlled light on the balcony, giving her a slight edge light. Then we've also got these profile shots. And for this, the camera would be placed here, looking at them. And this is where the wall of light would have been. So they would have got rid of that and boomed something over, hitting him and then also hitting her and then backlighting her as well. And you can see that these lights would have been smaller fixtures because it's a lot more saucy and not as soft as the other shots. So if you look at the difference between the two shots, you can see how much smaller that light would have been as opposed to the big wall of light. So I assume the order of these shots would have been either this dolly shot here first, and then they shape that light a bit more on her face, then jump back and then maybe do this wide shot here then the close-ups down the line on her, bringing some frames in to shape her a bit more. You can see some of these shots are a bit softer. Then swing the camera around to get the coverage on old mate here. Then remove all the lights and get these profile shots. You know, it's just an assumption, but that's probably how I thought I would have maybe done it. What the hell, scrolling through this footage, the hammer, gavel, mallet thing disappears. Then it's back. What? Maybe that guy sleeping was actually the continuity person. <laughs> The 
if you're a cinematographer, photographer or anything really, and you're trying to level up to get better creative jobs, having a website is crucial so people can see your work and hire you. Squarespace is easy to use, you don't need to know how to code or anything like that. You can just drag and drop and it's good to go. So whether you want to show your portfolio of work, run an online store, everything's built into the site. If you want to build a website, you can start a free trial at squarespace.com slash lewispotts to save 10% off the first purchase. So this is another scene from the same movie. We have these women, they walk and sit down for lunch. This other character comes in, they have this conversation. So again, with the behind the scenes footage, we can see they're shooting with two cameras. I don't think this camera shot here of her actually makes it into the movie, but we've got this back and forth between these two. So she is being lit from these softbox lights, boomed over the top of the table. Then this back here is like a diffused frame window that's in the shot. And it looks like that is what's lighting her, but it's also giving her a little bit of an edge light. We have this reverse shot and then you can see what's lighting her is, you know, some lights behind a sort of 12 by 12 diffusion. Then they've also got this other diffusion frame, which is, you know, sometimes you look at a shot of someone standing there and you're like, eh, it's not quite soft enough. Can we just throw something else in there? See what that looks like off and on. Yeah, let's go with it. That looks good. She's not moving that much, so that works fine. All right, then we'll go on to another quick scene from this same movie. This is pretty funny. We've got this <laughs> big soft ball of diffusion uplighting Kevin Costner and then it's just shoved right in front of this other actor you know and the crew would be saying we don't see you we never see you it's all about Kevin we'll just shove this right in front of your face and you can work around it what's interesting is when he walks over these softbox lights dim up in the shot which is unnoticeable when it happens in the scene but it helps keep that contrast that if they were on when he's standing back here, they would be filling in a bit more and making it a bit more flat. So rather than having them on the whole time, just dim them up while he walks over and it's unnoticeable that it's happening. And it keeps the shape of the light still there on him. And then this is just another nice little shot of this guy. You can see there's some sort of light map back here, edge lighting him, and then we've got everything on the camera side, you know, turned off or brought down. So it's quite dark. You're looking up at the ceiling to get these practical lights, and it just looks beautiful with these lenses and the grade and everything. And I think there might also be a soft light out to the left of the camera here. It would be quite dark if it was just that one light map coming in. So there's probably a light and a diffusion frame wrapping it around a bit more. This next one's just another quick shot from a movie called If Beale Street Could Talk, shot by James Laxton. I thought I'd just add it because I think it's nice to see the simplicity of lighting sometimes that you can do. Not everything has to be super shaped and perfect all the time for everything. I think it can be nice to not do that sometimes. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more authentic maybe. So we've got this table conversation, this guy walks up, then in the behind the scenes footage we've got this what looks like a Leco Source 4 type light and that's shooting up into the ceiling or maybe there's a card up there that it's bouncing into and giving them an ambient top light that's coming down. Then we just have this other little light mat filling in the shadows. A lot of the time when you use top light you get sort of shadows under the eyes so sometimes you need to either you know kick some light back underneath them or put a light like this that just fills it in a little bit more and it also gives a little eye light for him to yeah, so I just thought that's interesting to see that not everything has to be the same all the time that you do. You know, the camera's still kind of shooting on the dark side of the line, but you know, it's just not as polished with the lighting and it fits this movie and it fits some movies sometimes. All right, cool, I think that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.